Thus is the main courtyard. And the main courtyard comprises of where the men were kept. And all the rooms on the ground floors was where 600 men were shared among at the same time. And on top of the main dungeon, we have the soldiers, the missionaries' residence. Up above the missionaries' residence, we have the deputy governor's residence. The last floor is the governor himself's residence. So that is the governor's balcony where he stood to address the soldiers or instruct around in the main courtyard. And we have the two separate cells here. One for the Africans, the other one for the Europeans. The one with the lights bulb on top with a well-ventilated gate was the European cell. And the European cell was where the white soldiers, those who went out without permission, those who got drunk and misbehaved, they were there for a short time and taken out. As you can see, the big holes or windows are a good source of ventilation for them. And the gate over there, also a good source of ventilation for them as well. And none of them died there because they were fed twice a day. So let's see the condemn or the African cell. The skull and the crossbone at the door means danger. And thus cell was to met, punish the African captive leaders. Those who went out without permission, those who got drunk and misbehaved, they were here or in the cell for life. The skull and the crossbone means death. So none was able to escape the dangers. So he or she dies. This is how the room looks like when the door is closed. No ray of light. But thus, holes being placed here was placed there not for ventilation, but for a soldier that is standing outside to look through to see if anyone is dead. Then he pick the dead body out. We have the Portuguese church in the middle right in the middle but before we talk about it we're going to have a look at the men's dungeon one of it to see the room of no return and in this dungeon being one of the main dungeon we have this very room that is the branding room where branded metals are put in fire to mark the captives for easy identification. And with the branding, most of them died. And when the ship comes, also the men uses the transit dungeon to join the females in the room of no return. As we have slave exit waiting boats, just look at a narrow doorway where captives passes through to the room of no return. Slave as it waiting booth. We are in the room of intercession. Now, the females coming from the top, the men joining in from where we just Let's do those the female session. That will be the very first time a brother and a sister or a husband and a wife will meet themselves without knowing that they were captured in the dungeons because the men were separated from the women. From here, they all convey to the room of no return. So that's the room of no return. The last room a captive will be before going to his or her new world. 
That is the door of no return. The last door a captive will pass through to his or her new world. That is the original metal gate. And we have all these reefs of flowers brought in by Africans and Americans in diaspora to pay homage to those who died in the dungeons. All the flowers to pay homage. Just that the thickness of the castle walls, the dungeons wall. Just look at it. So initially, the sea was touching the castle walls, a staircase by the wall of the castle, where small boats at the end of the staircase, where they descend down into it, then taking to the bigger ship, where we have the remains of the jetty at the back of the castle. The fourth place that is close to the tree. That is where the ship dropped or anchored. And they were taken to America, Europe, and Caribbean countries. But you can see the sea has now receded due to climate change and the rotation of the egg. Initially, when they were trading in their goods, the gate was from that end to this end. But when they started with the human trade, they made the door so small for each person to go at a time and also to prevent anyone from escaping. And thus door does not mean that fat people were not brought in. They were actually brought there. They being fed once a day with the maltreatment forced them to stand to be able to pass through the door of no return. And we have the liquor, the minerals, the drinks that you see over there. They were also brought in by Africans and Americans in diaspora to pour libation on to those who died to rest in peace. To rest in peace. So we have the Portuguese church right in the middle. They were Catholics. There was a tower on top. They were using the top as their church service, the town as their functioning hall. When the Dutch took over, they were Protestants, used the top as their soldiers' men, so the down as their auction hall. The British used it as a police training school. And now it's a museum. And now it's on a museum. Just look at it. There was a tar on top for the Catholics. But the Dutch removed it because they were Protestants. They were Protestants. So sad. A church on top of where. So please don't forget to subscribe for the next video.